G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Today I'm in the amazing fruit bowl that is the Yarra Valley in Victoria. I'm looking at the response of Agriculture Victoria, local growers, distributors and regional coordinators in controlling a really invasive pest, the Queensland fruit fly. Not normally found in the Yarra Valley, the Queensland fruit fly was discovered a couple of years ago and it had the potential to threaten the viability of millions of dollars of fruit growing industry on the doorsteps of Melbourne. The response to this threat has been remarkably effective, really innovative and has involved everyone. Everyone's got into it. So today is a really good news story about how producers, marketers and regulators can all work together to maintain the viability of a really critical industry that employs a lot of people. Let's go and have a talk to the regional coordinator first, Bronwyn Cole, and find out all about this pest, what the problem is, and what she's doing to coordinate Agriculture Victoria's local on the ground response. Don't forget guys, if you like today's video and you do want to see more of this sort of stuff, hit the little subscribe button down there, give it a thumbs up. You've got no idea how much that helps the channel. I do have a website, I will be doing a blog on this um, and I have curated content. So if you're interested in only these kind of videos, get onto my website, have a look. You'll hopefully enjoy the experience. <laughs> So Bronwyn happens to be doing a fruit fly check on this property. Let's have a quick chat. Bronwyn, how are you? Good, thanks, Tim. How Lovely are you? Lovely to see you here. Thanks for coming. Um, this, is a, this is a really important job that you're doing today. Yes. Um, checking lures, checking bait traps. Checking traps, yes, that's correct. What's the importance in checking for this pest? It's making sure we don't have Queensland fruit fly. Yeah. So regionally, we're looking all across the Yarra Valley. And yep. if we can make sure we keep fruit fly out of the Yarra Valley, our growers and our home garden producers cannot have to worry about Queensland fruit fly. So Agriculture Victoria have invested a lot of time and energy in setting up biosecurity measures to control this threat. Your job as the re regional coordinator is to actually make that work on the ground. So you're talking to growers, packers, producers, marketers, local residents about the importance of the biosecurity threat that fr fruit fly presents. Yes. So. Queensland fruit fly is only on the east coast of Australia. Yep. And there are other states that don't want Queensland fruit fly. So we've got to make sure that everything that we ship and market over to those particular states, so that's Western Australia, South Australia and Tasmania. Yep. We've got to make sure that that's clean, no fruit fly. Yep. Now Agriculture Victoria have their role and they've had proper biosecurity surveillance grids set up, but they work best when we've got support and people adopting good Queensland fruit fly prevention practices on the ground. And I suppose the reason why I'm talking to you today is because of the resounding success that this coordination has made in controlling this pest. There are a lot of examples around the traps, as it were, <laughs> using the word, um, of pests that are a major concern that we don't want to cross borders. Yep. Um, every country has them. Yes. But the fruit fly response in the Yarra Valley has been so successful because of the amount of community engagement and the amount of grower engagement and the amount of work that you've done, boots on the ground in getting those systems to work. Definitely. So the Yarra Valley isn't that conducive to Queensland fruit fly. Yep. But it's been here. Yep. The best thing is that we've found it. Yeah. We've done something about it. You can't fix a problem if you don't know it exists. The point is that we have found them here before. Yep. We've found them here because we've got really good surveillance. Lots of testing, lots of zeros. Yep. But the one that we've found or the ones and twos that we've found have been because a, a resident has rung me up and said, hey, I think I've got something in my lemon. Or, hey, I think I've got something here. So tell me a little bit about the fruit fly. How big? What does it look like? The Queensland fruit fly is about yay big so it's yep. about eight mil long yep. it's got a wasp like shape so okay. a, an abdomen and a thorax and a head yep it's got uh yellow shoulder pads okay and it's got yellow stripes down its back and it's a reddy brown color so it's smaller than a wasp yep smaller than a bee it doesn't have the vivid bright yellow that a wasp has 
and it's very narrow and skinny. So it's so it's quite, quite easy to identify as being different to normal. If if you pick out those things, that it's yeah. small, reddy brown in colour, and has the distinct yellow shoulder pads and DT, GT stripes. Yep. Yep. You can usually differentiate it from something else that you might find in your garden or in your fruit fly traps. And I suppose that's one of the reasons why this response has been so successful is that the average home gardener, once they've been a little bit educated, can actually find and identify these things. Yeah, and we've yeah. got websites, Facebook pages, newspaper adverts. We've got a program in schools teaching kids about what fruit fly looks like and where to report it. Well, we've got to help that. that work. I'll throw those links into the description. Awesome. So we'll get that going. Can you tell me a little bit now about what you're doing today in checking this trap and how the trap works? Okay, so this is a fruit fly trap that attracts the male Queensland fruit fly. It's, it's always the males we pick on, isn't it? <laughs> They're the easiest to catch, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so th there's lots of different types of traps, but this is one that's consistent worldwide for, for monitoring Queensland fruit fly. So the male is attracted to this particular scent that's in this wick and there's also some insecticide in there that he meets his, meets his death when he goes in. Yeah, story of my life. So we go along, we have a look at these traps and we count the number of dead fruit flies that we find in these right across the year. So we've done that for several years now and that's why we can say there's no fruit fly in the Yarra Valley today that we know of. And you complement this with a couple of other fruit fly traps that we've got around that are automated or they've got cameras in them or they've got, well, we've even got one that's got a bioimpedance sensor. So we're bringing in new technology. We're also trusting boots on the ground and people actually going into crops and having a look at other parts of the, the crop as well. That's it's always so important to do fruit samples as well. So there's a really important message there at the moment, isn't there? And that is that with this intensive response, and with this, this wonderful coordination. The Yarra Valley is fruit fly free at the moment, um, but you're not stopping there. No. Biosecurity needs to continue past the point of the threat. And that's where a lot of people, I think, maybe drop the ball a bit. There's, you know, there's some great parallels with, with the pandemic that's been going around the world recently, where countries that haven't invested a lot in testing, where countries that haven't responded quickly and hoped that the threat would go away are now experiencing enormous problems, but countries that have responded quickly and decisively have been able to contain the threat and go back to business as normal. And we're seeing countries going back to business as normal after a couple of months. Yep. And that's pretty much what good biosecurity does in every situation, isn't it? Yeah. Whether it be Queensland fruit fly or any other pest. Mm. Pests, so pests you're continuing. Quickly. You're continuing to innovate. You're continuing to invest in controlling this yeah, pest. Yeah. Yeah. Pests will spread quickly. They're they're a biological system. Yep. If we don't find out about a Queensland fruit fly in the Yarra Valley for a number of weeks, the number of children or the number of Queensland fruit fly population that could explode from that one single detection is huge. Because they're breedy little buggers, aren't oh, they? Oh yeah, one fruit fly can have up to 800 eggs. So by the time that extrapolates out, there's mm. a whole population. So And they've got quite a rapid breeding cycle, yeah, I imagine. Yeah, 28 days in ideal, you know, lovely, balmy summer, spring conditions. Yeah, so right. the, the speed at which they can breed is so quick that mm. our, our whole mantra is early detection, rapid response. Fantastic. And so, it seems to be working. We think we've got a really good feedback from where we've been to. We've been to detections, we've put extra traps out, we've done door knocking and interaction with people within a K and a half. Yep. And we've had no further detections in those regions. That's fantastic. It is such a positive response. So you're dropping a blanket and investing heavily around the infection site and controlling it straight away. Yes, but you don't get that without a wide surveillance grid to start with Yes. and without an engaged community also giving you feedback and strength, strengthening that grid. Yeah. Because the grid alone won't tell us that there's fruit fly there. I mean, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. Yeah. Particularly, yeah. like I'm out here in the whole of Yarra Valley, I think it's like 180,000 uh, homes or resident, mm. Uh, mm. Not, maybe not residences, but properties. Yep. And I'm trying to find one fly. Yeah. Yeah. So I need, I need everyone's So help. everyone's got to get on board. Yeah. And that's the thing. If everyone gets on board and if everyone helps, we it. can do these the things. Bag. We can control these pests Definitely. and these problems. Let's go now. I'm, I'm going to go off now and I'm going to have a talk to a couple of producers. Sure. Um, and I'm going to talk to uh, a lovely chap who's involved in the marketing of fruit interstate. Yep. Um, distributor. Yep. And we're going to find out what the potential impacts of fruit fly would be yep. if it got away in the Yarra Valley. Because I think that can't be underestimated. Is it just because we've controlled a threat, it doesn't mean we should stop thinking about what it could actually do if it got away. Yeah.
So right now we're going to talk to Jeff Matthews, who's a sales manager for a large distribution company for growers called YV Fresh. Jeff, how are you mate? Good Tim, welcome to one of our farms. Thank you very much, lovely to see you on this sort of cool autumn day. Cold autumn day. Cold autumn day. <laughs> yeah, cherry trees are going to sleep already, it's yeah. sort of to leaf dropping time, but we're still yeah, right doing eh? some raspberries and chestnuts. Right, so you're still moving produce. Yep, you you probably pack and, and distribute, what, about 10 months of the year or so? Eight, eight to nine. Eight to nine. Eight to nine yeah. months, so let's okay. go and talk about it. Okay. Yeah, and I'm really keen to find out about what fruit fly means to you as a, a large marketing and distribution company. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit of a quiet one. Not a lot of people are really aware of the problem as much as I think they should be. Yep. Um, because if we were doing more about controlling it now, making sure the numbers are kept low, yep. uh, it's just going to be a better outcome from everybody than worrying about it if it gets out of hand. Well, I'm keen okay. for a chat. Let's go in and let's, have a talk. Let's go inside. Jeff, thanks so much for your time today, mate. Um, it's, it's a really interesting thing to talk about, fruit fly, right. in terms of a number of different perspectives. So you're a marketing and sales agent. We are. For a number of growers. Can you tell us a little bit about that to begin with? The business is actually set up by growers around 10 years ago, so it's grower owned. Yep. We work out of the Yarra Valley where the core of our growers are. Yep. We also have growers in King Lake, Mildura, Tasmania. Yep. And the idea is that we can do the sales and marketing for growers so they can grow and do that's their business, that's their job. Then we take their fruit, consolidate all the different growers' fruit together, and we're major suppliers to Coles, Woolworths and Costco. So we can get their fruit into a good good customer base for them mm, mm. but it means that we do that for them yep and, and you're actually employed by the growers so yes. you have like 11 different shareholders yep that are part of this company yep. and so they directly employ you to sort out mm -hmm. their problems with the supermarkets yep. and the supermarkets deal with you because you can sort out the problems of dealing with the growers that's it so you're you're the meat in a very complex sandwich yeah, we are a bit. How that's, come you still got your hair, right. mate? <laughs> it's a wig. So can we talk now about some of the effects that it's had on you as a major distributor? Yeah. Having a new pest come in that is actually a biosecurity threat. Because there's pests. Like, every grower deals with pests. Every grower's got <laughs> thrip, every grower's got whatever. What is it that makes fruit fly such a unique pest that we need to control it with biosecurity measures? With fruit fly, you've got a couple of things. One is it, it directly affects the fruit because it stings the fruit. And then that makes it harder for the grower because then what the grower's got to be able to do is sort out the fruit that's okay and the fruit that's been stung that has to be disposed of. That's really hard to do. And if you miss a bit, then it means you've got, potentially, you've got some fruit that's been stung by fruit fly that will develop into fruit fly larva in your punnet of fruit, and nobody wants that. Nobody wants to see fruit in a punnet that's not right. Those other pests you spoke about, they, they might do some damage to the, to the plant or whatever, but they don't damage the fruit in the same way. So fruit fly can add a bit of complexity and cost to your role if it's not managed effectively and if we don't keep fruit fly numbers low. Yeah, we can still send product to New South Wales and Queensland straight out of the paddock, packed, all cleaned up, QA checked and ready to go, it's fine. When we come to South Australia and WA, two of our other markets, we need to do a post-harvest fumigation on that product, which for us, that's where the complexity comes in. So we've got to send fruit via Melbourne market where the fumigation takes place that's a process that takes pretty much half a day to happen. By the time the fruit comes up, they need to bring the temperature up, fumigate it, bring the temperature back down again. So it adds a stage into our distribution. It adds a cost to do that. And now, because of the, the time that it takes, it takes an extra day to get that fruit to Adelaide. Um, Perth, Perth on that basis is pretty much out of the question now, because to get fruit to Perth in a reasonable time, because it's short shelf life product, um, we have to fly it over there. 
And if we start doing that, it adds huge cost and it sort of makes it uneconomical. So Adelaide's still a really good market for us. We want to go there. It adds a cost and we have to work around that. So fruit fly is not managed effectively in the Yarra Valley and it becomes more and more prevalent and more and more fruit stung. There's not only a loss of fruit grown to the growers here, mm -hmm. but it's going to make it even more difficult for you to access markets like Adelaide. Yes, yes it will. If there's more and more fruit stung, I mean, we'll actually just have a bit less fruit to sell, which, which we don't want. No, no grow, we don't want to see the grow with a reduced harvest volume. Mm. We don't want to see our volume go down and we're trying to look after our customers in a market that keeps growing. So we want more fruit, not less. Then there's the complexities we said around the grower having to sort the fruit, dispose of anything that might have been stung. Then the fumigation, well, that still has to take place. But the possibility of even if the fruit's fumigated, that, that will kill fruit fly. No, no problem, that's what it's aimed to do. Mm. But, you know, we still don't want to see fruit that's been affected by fruit fly that has been stung. So I suppose the big message coming out of all of this is if you are in an area that doesn't have fruit fly, make sure that you, and, and you've got a climate that makes you susceptible to fruit mm -hmm. fly, make sure that you've got farming best practices because there are enormous implications for distributors and growers. One Sorry. of the big messages we'd, we'd say, particularly to growers, is manage it now and keep the numbers low. Because the, the bigger those numbers get, the harder it is to get them back down again. And if you can manage it and keep the Yarra Valley fruit fly free or very low prevalence of fruit fly, it's not that hard to manage. But if it becomes a bigger number, it's harder to manage, your, your crop loss will be bigger. And it just, it's just not going to be a good situation for, for the growers. Yeah, it makes it a bit harder for us as a distributor, but, you know, in this case, I'm probably more concerned about the growers, the quality of the fruit and their, the yield off their farms so that they can afford to you know, keep doing a good job they're doing or expanding. Thanks heaps for that perspective today, Jeff. Having your experiences, marketing and distribution um, specialty um, and your comments on this is invaluable because people need to know that it's not just on their own farm that fruit fly is a problem. It's not just in their own backyard, but this is hurting business um, and it's adding cost to business. So if we can control it, uh, we'll be far better off. It's around the farms. And we talk a lot about farms because they're the people we deal with. And I'd encourage farmers to spend a bit now collectively to control fruit fly at the numbers it is now. <coughs> but the other perspective is the is, is the backyard fruit trees. Mm. And there's a big message we're trying to get out to people that grow fruit in their backyards, or front yards, wherever, but for them to watch out as well, you know, put lures in place, take some action to help report anything that you think is, is not right. Even if you're not sure if it's fruitful or not, don't matter, let somebody know, or let somebody out to check it but it's all about, for us at the moment, it's about prevention and putting a bit in to, to pay for prevention rather than having to try to spend a lot more later on when, if ever, it got out of uh, control. So now we've had the regional coordinator's viewpoint and the marketing viewpoint of the impact of fruit fly. Now we've got a rare opportunity, we're actually going to talk to the grower that first found fruit fly in the Yarra Valley, Kay Sibley. Now Kay has done a really brave thing in talking to us about this because she set an example for control of pests and diseases that I think is exemplary in the industry and it's something that other people can learn a lot from. So let's duck over and see Kay, I think she's checking a trap right now and we'll have a chat to her about what the impacts of fruit fly were on her business, what she chose to do about it, and why her actions have led to such a great result in the Yarra Valley. G'day Kay, how are you? Lovely to see you again. You Thank you very much for taking the time out today. Um, now you have a really unique story. I see you're checking your traps at the moment. There's another couple of weeks to run in your season for checking for fruit fly. Yep. You had an amazing experience in that you were the first grower in the Yarra Valley to actually find fruit fly on your property mm. in a trap. Yep. 
Um, and that had some serious consequences for you and some significant consequences for you. Yep. And um, you've chosen to have a chat to us about your approach because with the approach that you took, being very open and communicative and consultative with everyone around you, you've actually managed to get on top of the fruit fly situation and save a few industries. Yep. So what exactly happened? Okay, about three years ago, we found a um, fruit fly in the government trap on it, the border of our property. And then once we'd found that, or the, once that had been found, we then searched our produce, which was plums at the time, to see whether there was any evidence of them being there. And we found live fruit fly larvae in, in the plums. And so then we had to take some action and um, work out how we were going to get rid of, rid of them. And um, that's when we brought in the help of other people because we knew nothing mm. about it because we had never had to deal with that situation before and that's when we talked to Bron and we also talked to our agronomist Adam to work out what the best course of action was to to get rid of them and that became a baiting program and um, use of other chemicals as mm. well mm. so that's that's what what our situation was and we have been able to manage to get rid of the them in the last we haven't had another sighting in the last two years now that's significant. I mean, we're talking about a tiny little fly in the whole of the Yarra Valley, mm. and because of your and because of your early action, um, you were not only able to resolve the problem for yourself, but you've been able to pretty much make the Yarra Valley fruit fly fruit fly free um, through this program mm. and through coordinating with all your neighbours. It must have taken quite a bit of strength of character to put your hand up and go, um, "We've got it." Well, it must have been a difficult step to take. It was, but we we thought about it, and you always think, well, there are two options: you can say nothing, or and do nothing, or you've mm. got to be proactive about getting rid of it. And we were losing money because yep. of the wastage within the fruit. Because you, as soon as there's a there's a little larva in there, it's unsaleable, right. so you're losing your fruit. Mm. So you need to do something before it becomes. Now, yes. now, your packing costs went up dramatically when you first found the fruit fly. Yep, they uh, went up about 30%. Now, in any, in any agricultural business, any cost increase of 30% is unsustainable. Mm. Um, because of your clever and fast action and because you worked with everyone, um, has that been an ongoing cost to, you, to your packing cost or an ongoing increase to your packing cost or have you managed to get that back under control No, now? we've got that back under control now that we've had no, no further infestations. So... Yeah. But nearly by the end of that season that we, we first found it, we were back to normal because we had got that under control. So it, it is controllable and yeah. I think that's the biggest message. One of the biggest messages is get onto it and control it and then we'll, there's no we'll problem okay. and it's not going to cost you any extra money. Yeah. Isn't, isn't, isn't that such a positive message and such a positive story for so many people out there? Because regardless of the industry that you're in, there are pests and diseases that are going to increase mm. your cost. Um, but by responding quickly and by communicating with people and by getting involved in control programs, you've actually not only managed to get on top of it, but you've stopped it. Yeah, that's right. Isn't that fantastic? It Congratulations. <laughs> now, w let's have a chat while we're here. I'm, you've got Adam actually out with you, yes, who's your I agronomist. Yep. Um, why don't we have a chat with Adam now too about um, the stresses that that placed on the program and how you had to be really careful with your normal pest and disease control program yep. that you didn't create more problems in coming to terms yep. with controlling fruit fly. Definitely. Yeah, all right, well, let's let's okay. head over and see Adam today. Good, thanks, Tim. Yeah, lovely yeah. to see you here, mate. Thank you for taking the time. That's all right. Um, now, you're Kay's agronomist. Yes. Yep, and you, you in that role, um, work quite closely with her in designing the spray program for the orchard each year. Yes, especially around that harvest time. Um, mm. So the topic, obviously, is fruit fly today, and that's a an insect that um, starts stinging during that ripening process so yep. right when you're going to harvest it that's when it's a problem that's when it's a problem and we have to try and control that just as you're about to pick it so yeah. it needs to be this balance between what you can apply effectively yeah and also using a multiple uh, step approach so using baiting using chemical mm. sprays mm. using um, sanitation actually picking up fruit and removing it off the property to get rid of that larvae so it doesn't reinfest. And we love to talk about integrated pest management. I mean, yeah. that's it's obviously the mantra of anyone who, you know, sells chemicals or grows fruit or works in agriculture in any way. 
Um, but the importance of integrated pest management really showed its head with fruit fly, didn't it? Because you could go out with a hard spray program, but then you're going to cause all sorts of other problems for yourself down the track, weren't you? Some of those chemicals that are registered for use on fruit fly mm. are the old style uh, chemicals that don't actually have a good toxicological package for your beneficials. Yeah, so they'll so, start killing your ladybugs and all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, and what we have seen before is that you go and use it one of those organophosphates, all of a sudden your mite flare happens and things like that. So yeah, then yeah. you're just chasing your tail, trying to get hold of everything um, when it gets out of balance like that. So the strong message out of this as well is if you find a new pest and you're challenged by a new pest and you have to control it, consult your agronomist. Make sure that the steps you take to control the new pest don't create problems with your old pests and end up in a whole world of pain. That is very important because yeah. it's a fine balance and we have to try and make sure that we're here for the long term mm -hmm. approach type thing, not just the short term today. So it's what happens tomorrow as well. Yeah, all right. Well, Kay, Adam, thank you both very much for your time here today. Um, I really appreciate you guys sharing the story of such a successful intervention on an orchard in getting rid of a pest. Being so brave, Kay, um, to be at the forefront of this whole, of this whole situation. And Adam, um, coming up behind with all the information and all the necessary spray programs to make it so successful. So yep. thank you very much, both of you, for your time you. today. Thank you, and we really appreciate what you're doing in the community. So Bronwyn, I'm a resident of the Yarra Valley. Um, I'm also a fan of the amazing industry that we have here and mm. there's lots of people that rely on it for their jobs and for their livelihood. So can I just say thank you very much from all of us Thanks. for the amazing job that you've done Thanks. in promoting the awareness and making the biosecurity plans actually work and combat this problem. It's and amazing work. Thanks for being a conscientious resident. Without you and without people like you, we wouldn't have this. Guys, don't forget, if you like this video, please do subscribe, give it a thumbs up. You've got no idea how much it helps the channel. If you're interested in finding out about more of Bronwyn's amazing work, check out my website, check out the links below in the description on the video. Um, there's a lot of work still to be done, um, but this is a damn good news story. Once again, agriculture, horticulture, innovating, rising to the challenge, beating it and securing a good future. There's a really important message there, isn't there? Is that the Yarra Valley, as we know it right now, with intensive surveillance, is considered to be fruit fraud. Fruit fraud, fruit fraud, fruit So there's a really important message there at the moment, isn't there? And that is that with this intensive response and with this this wonderful coordination, the Yarra Valley at the moment is fruit fly fly fly. <laughs> This is why we'll it go takes from there. an hour. The Yarra Valley 